All right, so I'm up here on the roof examining the situation. We got a uh, 15,000 pump. Not sure if that's exactly the one that we need. We got a bunch of calcium deposits going on in here. This thing, like I said, is as old and as rusty as the house. And you can see it has seen better days. This belt has seen better days. These pads have seen better days. This whole thing is done. All right, how handy is this though? I'm sitting here worried about the electrical going, you know, how am I gonna take care of this? How do you, do you have to turn off the circuit breaker? What's the deal here? Oh, a couple of cool things I found out. Well, look at how nice this is. There's an off switch. So, uh, that's handy. And up here, I've got plugins which is even handier. So I can just unplug that, take the motor off myself. All right, one more important thing to note, the uh, bottom of this trough is an 18 by 18. Uh, they also make them 20 by 20. So basically just snap you a tape measure from one end to one end, the bottom of the trough. So that way you know how big the opening is in your roof. Okay, this is a rough guess of some things that I think I'm gonna need in order to rebuild the swamp cooler. But what we really need to know is the size of what pulley we need to get. They have 12 by, I'm guessing it's three quarter, 12 by one, 12 and a half, I need to know. <clears throat> so I need to take a measurement of the uh, diameter. 12 inches otherwise one foot so that's how I'll be measuring the one on the roof okay this one is a four inch diameter but a five eighths bore so I need to go find out what the bore and the diameter of the pulley is on our motor now I do have a veneer caliper in here because I mine's at work so I'm picking that up to measure the inside diameter of the bore all right Okay, they have this stuff called heavy duty D scale. This is supposed to help clean and reduce calcium, sludge, slime, corrosion, etc. So we're gonna need this in order to clean out the trough if we're gonna try to reuse it. We haven't even got to the hot months yet and there's only two troughs left. So this is gonna be interesting to say the least. All right, paint. So they had some tan paint up here somewhere at 5.40 a can for the cooler if we wanted to clean it up and make it look nicer and basically when I'm done wire wheeling it make it to where it doesn't corrode as fast okay here's the pump that we need it's a 15,000 pump that's supposed to cover a thousand square feet it's over here on the end cap that's 41 bucks they have other ones here 11,000 5,000 11,000 7,500 just depends on how big or how much square footage you want to cover. All right, belt sizing. So 55 inch in diameter is what I'm guessing on, but again, I'm gonna to have to take an actual measurement, but it goes from 46 inches all the way up to 69 inches. So I've gotta be pretty precise as far as how long the belt needs to be. All right, let's talk about this float for a minute. So this one looked pretty good. It has a way that you can adjust it without having to unbolt anything, just a little tiny wing nut. But of all of the floats that they had available, I think that that was probably the better choice. A few extra bucks, but a better option nonetheless. All right, half inch hose, we'll need that because ours is completely destroyed. That's five bucks. And there's a couple of adapters that we're gonna need. Cooler drain bushing overflow pipe for our valves. Can be found here and up here those are only a couple of bucks a piece all right pulley puller i am going to get this because there's only two left and we're going to want to remove the pulleys anyways i think that's like 30 bucks or something like that i'm also going to be keeping these uh avanti pro quick scrub sponges to try to get the uh, rust and corrosion off and if that doesn't work i'm getting this milwaukee wire wheel all right the tub so we need a tub in order to catch the calcium deposits, a little basket for our pump. 
that's only a few bucks. Okay, doing this by the roll could save you money over time, and it could also cost you just as much. So you can see if you know the exact diameter, you're talking maybe about 40 bucks for four pieces, or pay 35 bucks for an entire roll. Uh, they also have this whisk style, which actually I think cools better than this. But I haven't used this myself. My dad told me this stuff is not very good. I should take his advice, but I'm kind of wanting to try something new since that was what was on our house currently. All right, let's get this wrapped up. All right, we're also going to be picking up the 48 inch level so I can see if the patio awning that I'm trying to create is level because I didn't have one before. So I'm just going to pick this one up from Home Depot as well as this degree measurement tool. Stainless steel protractor and a center punch for the barbecue project, which can be put on hold until I take care of the house. All right, guys, so that is pretty much everything that I think that you would need if you were trying to restore or repair the current swamp cooler that you have. Now, that those are the items that I saw that would have been helpful for you. Now, I've had to replace the spiders that come down, that get the pads wet to uh, create sufficient cooling. Let's talk about sufficient cooling for a second. So if you're running a swamp cooler, it's not enough just to have the air flow down through the air duct and into the house. Air also needs a way to come back out of the house for sufficient cooling, whether that's cracking the windows in the kids' room or your room or leaving the rear slider open. You need some way of air being able to flow through the house to ventilate. So once air comes in, it's got to go out, right? So. That's the whole purpose of a swamp cooler. It also saves you a lot of money on your electricity bill too if that's something that you're interested in. Look, a lot of people in the desert areas tend to go with a swamp cooler over central air conditioning because it's cheaper, it's more efficient, and to be honest, it's mostly dry climate here. If it was super humidity, say like Georgia or Mississippi, there ain't no way that a swamp cooler is going to do you any good. That when it becomes really humid, everybody suffers. A swamp cooler doesn't do anything, and that's at the point that you wish that you had central air conditioning. All right, so that's pretty much everything that I think that you would have needed to restore this. Now, mine was not restorable. It's 25, 30 years old, 32 years old. It's an old, old workhorse. It's the original swamp cooler that came with the house. The only thing that had ever been done to it was the pads change and the actual pump change. That's it. I don't even know if the belt had been changed. Jesus, that thing looked old and crusty as heck. Any rate, I'm getting ready to show you the swamp cooler trough that we got, what all came with it, how to mark and annotate which electrical wires that you're taking apart, how to kill the power going to it. We're going to be hooking all the electrical back up ourselves. We're going to be changing the uh, main electrical cable with the uh, motor because the motor looked like it had been changed not too long ago. We're gonna keep the old motor. We're gonna be uh, showing you what came in the swamp cooler kit because I was a little bit misled by an employee that actually was in charge of the swamp cooler section. I was told that the only thing that it came with was the pads and the trough and everything else would have to be purchased. That is not the case. It came with a heck of a lot more than I thought it did. So that being said, let's see what it came with and how to do it. All right, so I jumped on top of the roof. There's no way to save the trough at all. So we're just gonna see. Hopefully this is all that I need. Now I did walk around and I saw some pieces on what I might have to come back for later. We got the float, our drain plug, our level plug, our hose, our pump itself, and the trough. And we're gonna try to reuse the motor. I'll get a measurement of the belt and the pulley that we need. All right, I'm gonna start with the small stuff. I already took the sidings off and pitched them in the trailer for now. Uh, some of the things that we can do. I did bring up my bags, filled them with what I thought I might need, and of course, I still need different stuff. So we can cut the zip ties going to our pump. We can disconnect our pump, get rid of that, which is that guy right there. Uh, since it's hooked up up there, I don't know how important it's gonna be to take off the hose, especially since we got a different hose. So I'm just gonna cut this hose. I can do this right here. With these empty cutters. There, that deletes that. And I don't have to go down for another tool. 
Now the other thing that we have going on is I'm gonna to need to find the right socket for this to adjust the pulley uh, enough basically to get it dismounted from the top of this thing. And since this thing is so rusted and corroded, what I've been using is this WD-40 penetrant spray. Just kind of let it soak up. I've also soaked the screws here, which are flatheads. So I'll have to go down and get a flathead. As far as the belt, we cannot reuse this belt but we might need to know the length. So we can cut the belt. That's a flat rate trick. And we'll figure out the length of that later. So that's that. All right. The other thing that I brought up was a pulley puller. I did not bring up the diameter tool and I forgot to bring a little Allen up. So I need to find a corresponding Allen that fits in that. So I could pull the pulley off of this. Uh, I think we're gonna change it. It actually doesn't look too bad, does it, guys? All right, maybe I'll keep that. Okay, the next thing you know, I gotta take measurements down there, make sure the one that we have is 18 by 18. I did ask them in the store. They said they believed it was, but I would have to check. And then I need to get this thing dismounted. Okay, I'll need to turn off the electrical. I'll need to unplug our pump, unplug our motor, like so. I might plug that back in just to make sure this is off. I have to wait for the wife to get back. And I'll have her flip it back on real quick. As long as power's off, I should be able to take the box out. Which looks like it's got a couple of screws holding it up here as well. So now I need to go get a flathead and start taking some of this stuff apart. All right, I got my son down in the house. I'm gonna yell down to him to turn on the pump just to make sure that we have no power going to it. So first, I'm gonna switch. Right now, it looks like we're on. I'm gonna, and that says off. Let's leave it in the off. But I think it was like that though, wasn't it? All right, turn it on. Did you turn it on? Okay, hang on one second. Is it still on? Okay, thank you. Okay, so if it says off, that's off. Kind of a self-explanatory, I guess, but you can never be too safe. When the thing was on, it was humming. As soon as I flipped it off, the humming went away. All right, let's just see how good I am, shall we? So. That crescent wrench was just a little bit too big for the area. I took a guess that that was a half inch size fitting. So I grabbed a half inch size wrench. Ooh, that's snug, but it works. All right, and since this thing's moving all around, I'm gonna use these channel locks, grip it, and spin that line off. There you go. There you go. So, uh, just wiggle, wiggle, baby. Uh, man, you're really on there. All right, let me see if I can grip it with these bigger ones. Try to grab and pull it with these smaller ones. Just like that. All right, let's so have to feed this through. So, ah, oh, what the heck? Look at that. That copper is not passing through. And that could be an issue. I'm either gonna have to cut this or I'm gonna have to cut this and reflare it. All right, let's see if the master still has the skill here. I think these were half inch too. Uh, I couldn't get that lucky, could I? Could not get that lucky, so now we have to go back down. So, that's probably a metric bolt, I bet. Or it could be 716, I don't know. 
All right, well, now we know the power's off, we can disconnect all that and move on to the next step, which is to hopefully get this box undone. I don't know how screwed up these little self-tapping screws are. Well, those are barely in. Okay, cool, that's gonna be easy. So let's disconnect our pump, disconnect our motor, and let's take these screws out. Set you guys up in here. I'm going to have to paint pen mark some of these wires because I'm gonna have to try to remember where they go. Let's do a blob there, blob there, and I believe those are the only two wires going to that one, and then. We'll do a, a blob farther down here. And then we'll do another one up here. So two marks. Two marks on that one. One, two. All right, so black to black. Shouldn't be too, too hard. The gauges are uh, approximately the same size, so let me Figure out if I can untwist these. Oh yeah, these things are even broken. I'm gonna have to redo those. I hate messing with electrical, I really do. Okay, leave that one alone for now. Let me untwist this one, however they did that. That's fun bend that one out of our way. Put that little cap on it. All right, so then we've got red to white. Uh, two blobs, okay. So now red to white, we're just gonna do one red mark on this. And one red mark on this. Oh, that's okay. It's gonna be kind of hard to annotate that, but this one red dot on this wire goes to a red wire, which goes into this uh, outlet over here closest to me. So I'm gonna try to remember that. Okay, let me untwist this. Okay. Two greens going to copper. So two greens to copper are off. Okay. Unmarked white wires go to unmarked white wire. Okay, that box is off. Okay, nothing touching. God, I hope I'm doing this right. All right. Next, I'm gonna have to take this off. Just gonna spray a little bit on there and I'll get a pair of my channel locks and Get that undone. Looks like we need two pairs of channel locks. Okay. 
Okay. I just Okay, nothing. 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 Okay. There goes nothing. Let me get this off. Wow. Oh, fucking things on there. Really? Still stuck on shit? There's a rubber grommet on the back side. Okay, that is now off. Okay. That's that. Sweet. Nothing to it. Now I just gotta get the motor off. Let me go find the right socket for that. All right, another little tip. Uh, cutting the belt and stretching it out as long as the tape measure will also help you to figure out what size belt you need. I know I don't, I'm not holding it down now, but I already got done checking it out. We need a 58 inch belt. 7 16 is our dog. That's the one we need. So, I'll move this hose out of our way. I'm gonna undo this and get this thing off. See you guys in a second. All right, the motor is off, and all that's really left is pulling out our water line. Got these Fat Max, I'm sorry, yeah, Fat Max Stanley tin snips, which I think will be just fine for what it is we want to do here. Like that, and I don't even need to cut it again. I can just use it to bend the crap out of the metal, like so, and. Ta-da! Our water inlet line is now removed and out of the way. All right, so what do I got left to do now? I gotta take the screws off of this dealio thing here. This thing's gonna be heavy and it's gonna suck. Better see if I still have some help. All right, so this is our little jerry rig plan. He's gonna hold on to the ratchet strap until I can get this thing unsecured. Then we're gonna lift it up and throw it off the roof. Okay, this is pretty nasty stuff. We got the trough off. Like I said, we pitched it off the side of the house. There's no going back now. Thing's damaged. We're gonna have to be a lot nicer to the new one. All right, but that being said, lots of nasty stuff going on up in here. And I don't want everyone breathing it in. So we got our rigid shop vac. We're going to clean it up. All right, so what we did was we wrapped a rope around it. Him and I picked it up. We got it up to this part. I stood underneath it with my arms fully extended. <clears throat> he went up the other ladder, grabbed the rope, and we pulled it straight on up while I pushed. So let's get up here and take a look at this new swamp cooler. So here's the new one. You can see they gave us a pump already, the 7500 series. They also have a ground cable pre-attached. Not sure what to hook that to just yet. We're gonna read the instructions and find out. Here's where our power inlets are supposed to go, so I'll probably have to take that off. We are more than likely going to have to use a hole saw bit and go through this at some point to feed the wires in. They did come with new pads. It came with the oversized pulley down here, and it came with the mount for the new pump. Let me come over here. Looks like we got something lifted up here. Eh, shipping probably or how they did it. At any rate, 
goes right in there over the chute, which I vacuumed out. Alright, so now I'm going to grab this box. I'm going to bring it down. Compare it to what it is that I have. I'm going to leave all these up here on the roof for right now. Hopefully I can get the rest of this all set up tonight. Something I didn't know that the Swamp Cooler came with was an entire kit to include float, pulley, electrical, everything. And it came with the pump and it came with uh, the hose already hooked up. And one thing it didn't come with was the motor. Now the employee that worked at Home Depot that was in the Swamp Cooler department told me it doesn't come with anything. It's just the shell itself and the pads. So I literally bought everything that I thought I was going to need. Didn't need any of it. Alright, that being said, I still have to pull the pulley off because this pulley is different than the pulley on our motor. So we're going to get the motor off of the stand. We're going to remove the pulley. Install the new one, and uh, then after that, we got some electrical stuff to look at. All right, it was a uh, <clears throat> metric H4 Allen screw that was holding the back one. This thing might actually even be threaded on. Now I'm going to do this one. Okay. Oh yeah, definitely not pulling that one off. I mean, I can spin the other one off or make it tighter and adjust it, but no pulling that one. So, let's find our puller. Okay, there we go. Wow, that pulled off easy, didn't it? Nice. It was just a little bit harder to do by hand, but this is a little pulley. It actually did what it was supposed to do, man. It pulled that sucker right off. How about that? Didn't even need to loosen the, well, maybe I did. I don't know. I don't know that those little things were doing anything. All right, at any rate. Let's give this a wipe here. This thing has got burnt up belt all over it. Just going to give it a quick wipe off. It's going to be hitting the elements anyways. So, give it a little spray there in the bearing part. Kind of give it a little maintenance, if you will. Wipe that out. All right, and I'm gonna open our little bag that the new pulley came in. I'm gonna pull the new pulley out. Let's take a look at this. Ooh, that, that sucker's hot from being on top of the roof. Same concept it looks like. Spin on, spin off. And the only difference is, is this looks way different than this. A different style <clears throat> no it's fine here I'm done so there and I lies the problem now it looks to be about the same diameter I wonder if I should just run the old one because of how that's set up and how it's just a little bit different I think I'm going to. You know, I was going to put the new pulley on, but looking at things how they are now, I don't think so. Not so much. So I'm just going to give this a quick wipe. Spin this thing completely off. Like so. Going to clean it up. Try to reduce any kind of noises. The wee, 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 wee from it just chirping around. Gonna hit it real quick with the wire brush. Uh -huh. It don't gotta be perfect. 
certainly doesn't hurt to make it better than it is though. Clean the threads up. Give it another wipe. Spray this too. Why not? And then we'll thread it back on. Okay. Now we can get some of that penetrant oil in there on the threads as well. And we'll just wipe it one more time. No need to have excessive oil on it or anything. It's all cleaned up for the most part. Let's get our belt and get an idea of how it wants to sit in here. Something like that. I figure it's probably pretty good. So we're going to leave it like that. We are going to find our center point here. Let me back this off to 180. I'm going to slide this back in. And then I'll run our little Allens back down. And if I need to adjust it, I can. So that's how you would adjust your belt tension, I guess. Or another way you can adjust belt tension. Okay, that's one. And here's our second one. Okay. Good to go. We're going to have to put some of this stuff in our bag. Let's look at the new electrical stuff and compare it to the old stuff that we already took off. So, alright, all right, good times. They gave us a float. We got an extra float. Here's our little screw for our other one, I'm guessing. Oh, it's already got one in that one. We'll just put it here on the back side. Just in case we decide to use this on a later pump. So if we ever have to change pumps out, and this pulley corresponds with that, we can. So I'll set that off to the side. All right, electrical cord number one is we have this, which is gonna plug into the motor, except for our motor already has one attached to it. So why bother reinventing the wheel is kind of like what I'm thinking here. I don't see the point in doing that. Here's our, our old one. Hang on, let's compare. God damn it. Urgh. Here's our old one, and here's our new one. So set up the exact same. Wires are on the other end. Do we really want to change this out? I don't know. Let's flip it upside down and take a look at the back side of this and see what we're dealing with as far as rewiring it. I don't know that we need a new harness. There's nothing really wrong with this one in my opinion, but there's a little bit of corrosion on the end, so maybe it wouldn't hurt, especially since we have one. Let's see. Oh boy. That thing looks fucking powdered out too. Look at this. Alright, so we got some dust and debris and all kinds of good shit in here. I think I'm going to get my blow gun, fire on the air compressor, clean this thing out. And I think we are going to actually change the harness out, so let's do that.
Let's, uh, let's change the harness out. First, let's make sure all the colors correspond. We got a green, a white, a black, and a red. So far, everything looks and appears to be the exact same as what we have in the motor. So let me get a pair of pliers here, and we need a flathead. So the green is going to be the case ground. Ooh. which that ground was like no good anymore. I can fold that back. Okay, looks like L is gonna be for the red. Let me see if I can't gently pull that out. So L is red. Presto change C, which I'm guessing is for common, is the white one. I'm going to pull that one out. Put C in place. Uh, black, I'm not sure what that is, uh, but it's H on the motor side. So we pull the black one off. All right, old harness is removed. Let me tuck H underneath here like so. Uh -huh. and we'll plug that one in. Okay, H is done. Now we can put our, I'm guessing it's our ground, our case ground here, the green one, back in. And we'll tighten that up with our trusty little Matco flathead. Okay. Now we're gonna route everything back over here, make sure nothing's in its way. Let me get a, the plate put back on, wherever I put it, here we go. Wipe the inside of that off. Okay, here's our plate. Oops, dropped it. Okay, we have our new harness pigtail installed onto our old motor. Let me set that off to the side for right now. Something that I'm going to need to go back to Home Depot for. Oh, here's our little plug that it came with. We got these two to do now. And we got to put them in a, the box somehow that it came with. Not exactly sure how we're going to do that just yet. Uh, let's look at our old box just to kind of give everyone an idea of what it is that we're working with. All right, so these little connectors, see this thing's just loaded with calcium. Uh, I don't have any of these at the house. I'm not an electrician. I don't pretend to be, but today I guess I am. So at any rate, we have this three prong here, which is this one here. I'm guessing that plugs into, uh... oh, you know what? They're probably giving us two different options here for motors because that is not helpful to me at all where I need this. And unless their pump runs this style of connector, that doesn't do me any good. For right now, let's set that off to the side. But it does have three wires, which leads me to believe this could be for the pump up there. I'm going to have to go back to the roof. 
All right, now let's look at the bigger one here. So on here, we have a white, a black, an orange, a red, and a green coming out of the big one. So we have a green, red, a black, a white, and an orange. And it looks like they cut the orange off. They didn't even use the orange, which I'm guessing we won't have to either. So I can pretty much fold that one to the side. Here's our wires. Now this other one, they gave us a white, a black, and a green. On this one, they gave us an orange, a green, and a black. So I'm gonna go back on the roof, verify that this fits the pump. If it doesn't, we're gonna have to reuse the old one. If it does, we're gonna have to read the instructions, but I'm pretty sure that the orange is gonna end up being our white. Then I'm gonna run back to Home Depot, pick some of these guys up. Just see how far we get. All right, lucky me. This connector is actually inside the bag too. I just took a look over as I was turning the camera off. So I don't know, this is for a different style of pump. We don't need to use that one. We need this one. So those are gonna be the two that we need. Now we don't have a plate like this up there. It's set up a little bit differently. So I'm gonna see how we're gonna to have to pass through the electrical. I still think we're gonna to have to do some drilling and some hogging and whatever else. Oh, look at that. They did give us new straps for our pump. I guess it helps to look at the shit that they give you. I'm not sure what this is. And it looks like they also gave me some extra tubing for the uh, system where it trickles the water down. So that's nice. And they gave me this little tee off. So that's cool. So I'll put all that stuff over there. All right, looks like our run to the store is gonna be very short. Here is all this good information here about it. Let's see how they walk you through it. Do they show you where the electrical stuff goes at all? This is just motor specific functions, cages, belts. They, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. All right, so. Motor in, yes. I don't know how to read Spanish. Why am I reading the Spanish side of it? Is it in the front? It's in the front. All right. I'm back, gentlemen. I'm back. I went to Home Depot and bought some more shit. All right. Now, I don't have my DVOM here. It's at work, where everything else is. Uh, where's my fucking scissors? And we're gonna be testing the circuit here, I'm sure, when we're done. So let me just open this up. It's not an automotive meter, okay? This is a household meter. Since I'm starting to do my own household repairs, since we now own our own house, I figured, you know what, it might as well, might as well get with the times in the program and start thinking like the home handyman junior that I need to be. Because the family is depending on me to fix stuff in our house. So, that being said, here we go. Come with this bag. We got our ammeter. I'm sure the batteries are probably not in. They're not. So we're gonna have to open the back of this. Just take a small fill. Let's talk about this thing later. I gotta get on the roof. So, put that in my bag. All right, so how I'm gonna do this? So, all right, so how I'm gonna do this? I'm gonna slide this one like this. That's gonna be for our pump. Our Grumman's gonna have to hook up to the other ones when we get up there. And this one's gonna be for the motor, which I'm gonna slide in like so. I don't have to take the paperwork with me because they gave me this beautiful chart here in the back. That'll help us out with that, all right. Consensus is, because we're running off of 110 for this, or 120, however you want to look at it, we're not going to need this orange wire, so I'm just going to cut the majority of it off. And so as not to leave it exposed, I'm going to slide this little piece of heat shrink on the other side and seal it up.
there it is cool so that's all set up we got our wires and connectors set up I'm gonna take this old one up with us as a reference as well as my cell phone so I can look at that this is what our conduit was going through before the rubber washing is clearly gone but I'm gonna need this for when I go and drill the freaking hole all right so I'll put that in my bag as well I need to bring a hole saw kit with me too all right let's get on the roof all right things are coming together quite nicely we got the new brackets installed the new harness installed on the motor the belt is now in place and all we gotta do is take that metal bracket off and start getting our other wiring incorporated into it and then just got this feeling that I'm gonna have to use a hole saw to come up here and drill this out so hopefully I still have those here and not at work and uh, we can pass our electrical through that I will also need to use the hole saw to come in here to feed our water inlet lines through. Uh, that's gonna be interesting too. It shouldn't be too, too difficult. I might have to save that for another day. I'm running out of daylight. Alrighty, so that worked out really well. I was able to put the adapter in. Both of those are now hooked up on the inside. The smaller gauged wires are what go to the pump. The longer wire with the bare end here is our common that is actually attached to the swamp cooler itself. And the thicker gauge ones all go to the motor. So now I have to drill this little hole down here. And I've got these to tie in. I've got this. Uh, compression union and hopefully I can find the right size I'm hoping this is going to be this this is the smallest one I have uh, hopefully that's going to be sufficient enough for that if not I might just have to find a drill bit that's sufficient but I have to get the water inlet tube through the bottom here so that's what I'm working on all right the uh, hole that I hogged out was a little bit bigger than I wanted it to be so I just went further up and tied it in now this last one was all the way through. This one's right here on the edge. So hopefully that threads to that. If not, that's why I bought that other fitting. Okay, so I think just to revisit here, one red wire went to this white wire that I put one red dot on. These two white wires, one coming out of the bigger one, one coming out of the smaller one, go to the unmarked white wire. This one black wire that went to the smaller one with the one dot to one dot. The other black wire that went from the bigger one to the other one with two dots. All greens going to the copper uh, common. Looking at the diagram, this is how it shows it. So I'm going to look at this for a few seconds. Make sure I'm all good to go. Mount this back up. Plug everything in and do a test. All right. Hope to God I'm fucking right. I got everything plugged in. I got the amp meter around it. I'm gonna attempt to flip the switch first and see if I have any power. Okay, everything is on. We're hot. Okay, go ahead and have your mother flip the pump on real quick, please. Off. Well, I got no range running through that. All right, so clearly the pump's working. I believe I have everything set up the way that I need to. Uh, I put the plug in, only, and I'm gonna blow the inside of the trough out. I'm not sure about that meter, why it's not picking up the amps or the volts going through it. I think I'm probably using it wrong. I'm not an electrician. I've never used an auto-ranging amp clamp. I just thought it'd be cool to try something new. All right, doing a leak check of the uh, water here. And there she goes, she's filling up. All right, yeah, just let it run. Hell yeah. It's doing its job. Yep, wonderful. All right. Home Handyman Junior and Junior. Mission complete. Pump works, trough's filling up. That was a little bit of a headache. Yeah. A little boo-boo there at the end with the uh, hole saw. I probably should have just used an oversized drill bit to be honest. 
but it came all together pretty good. Let's take a look at our final product here. So we got the drain plug in, troughs filling up slowly but surely. Once that gets full, I'll run it again. Uh, a little bit disappointed in this amp clamp, or at least my knowledge of using it. I'm gonna have to look into this a little bit more. I would have thought if I would have thrown that thing around anything, it should give me some kind of voltage or an amperage. That's what I was hoping on. That didn't happen. Uh, we did put the new wiring harness in on our motor. We left the old pulley on, moved it in, put the new clamps on, the new belt. Got that hooked up. All this stuff came with it for the most part outside of the motor. So if you're looking for the swamp cooler, this is what you can expect. Did the wiring, that wasn't too bad setting up for uh, 110 or 120. Now if you were looking for 230 or 240, that's what the orange wire comes into place. We're not hooking that up to that. We don't need that right now. So there was no need to use it, which is why we put a piece of heat shrink over it and cut it flush. I did update uh, the float though. I put the heavier duty one on there where I can adjust it. Let me show you this adjuster on the back side here. So instead of bending the tube to your satisfaction, it's got these little notches in it. You can just loosen that wing nut and adjust it accordingly. Like I said, I wish I would have made the hole a little bit smaller. I could have done that with a drill bit, uh, but I guess I was overzealous in wanting to use this Matco hole saw kit, which I don't get a lot of use out of. I didn't end up needing the compression union after all. I did need a bag of these wing nuts. I picked those up. Um, keeping the old template and video footage definitely helped me to remember where the wiring went, especially this little chart. This chart helps you a little bit, but uh, paint marking everything helped out more. So, Sean, if you're watching, thank you, Sean Dane. Appreciate it. All right, uh, let's see, what else? Uh, not a bad setup, really. So for 500 bucks, you get everything except the motor, which we were able to salvage. Uh, everything else basically went off the end of the roof, and I'll deal with that later. I'll just take a dump run. So goodbye, old, nasty, rusty swamp cooler that's about as old as I am. Your time is done. Well, everybody, that'll pretty much wrap it up for this video. Thanks, as always, for watching. I appreciate it. If you liked the video or you found it helpful, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, didn't find it helpful, I don't know what to tell you. I know not a lot of people out there probably use swamp coolers. This is mostly for people that live in the desert climate. Why? Because it works well in dry climate. Uh, if, it's a, if it's humid, these swamp coolers don't work all that well. That's why central heating and air conditioning is nice to have. But in the older houses, especially in the desert, we use swamp coolers. I mean, you could look at pretty much almost everybody's roof, and in some way, shape, or fashion, they have a swamp cooler on it. And that's just because of the dry climate. So the swamp coolers work well in dry climate, and they don't take that much uh, power or electricity to run. You can keep them running all night. Just have a window cracked open, get some ventilation going through the house, Presto Changeo, nice cool house, really small electric bill. That's all I got, guys. We'll see you guys next time. Cheers to those of you that have your beers and deuces. We'll see you next week. What you doing down there? Uh, I'm You're going to clean up for me? Um, yeah. Okay. Thank you. I don't know why I didn't think about this before, completely forgot about it. Usually after I get done cleaning the swamp corn and everything out, I usually fill the trough first. If you don't do it this way with the garden hose, you'll be waiting all day with that little guy. So food for thought. Okay, have her try the high cool.
Okay, have her put it back on low. I tell her to leave the pump, just put her on pump mode and leave it on pump. <laughs> 